Hello class, welcome back. Today is lecture five and we are talking about conditional probability. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Um, so what is conditional probability? The probability that an event A occurs um, given that another event occurs or has already occurred is called the conditional probability of probability, there's too many letters in there, probability um, of A given B and the way we write it, it's denoted as this notation, P of, um, and then you put the event that you're trying to figure out um, its probability, which is A, and then second, you put the probability that, um, or not the probability, you just put the event B, the thing that has already occurred. Um, so you read this as the probability of A given B. Okay, so the idea behind this is just oftentimes um, you can restrict yourself to a situation where something else has already happened in order to calculate probability. So this is not the same as just the probability of A. Um, so there you're considering A to be in a sample space. Um, the idea here is that B is sort of acting like the new sample space. Like a smaller sample space. And um, we only consider the part of A in B. Um, but that has another notation. So what is that? The part of A in B is really just the intersection of the two. Um, so I'll draw a picture of this to show it better. But, but um, if you want to just think about the stuff in A that's in B, then you're thinking of this. And you want to think about this as, as being like an event inside uh, a sample space now being B. Um, so that's the idea behind conditional probability is, is really what's the probability of this event um, where you think of this as the sample space. Okay, so let me draw a nice little picture here to demonstrate what's going on in a simpler way. So visually, um, we are looking at this situation. So you have your sample space, you have an event A and B, two events. And remember their intersection visually is just this part here. A intersect B. Um, so the idea is that since uh, B has already occurred, this becomes, um, let me draw it this way actually, it becomes just this now. So B has already occurred. So you're only thinking about the outcomes from A that are in there. Um, so we're really just looking at this. So let me shade it just to make it more clear. So, so we're just thinking of now B as the whole sample space instead of omega. And the event that we're looking at is A intersect B. 
Um, so then what is this thing that we're studying? Well, if we think about probability as area in these bubbles, then what we can think about is the proportion of the red stuff in B. So then the probability of A given B should be the proportion of how much stuff is in the intersection, which is this probability in red up there, divided by the sample space area, which is now B, probability of B. Um, so this is going to be the definition for conditional probability of A given B is this little equation here. Okay, so just in other words, it's the proportion of A is how much of A is actually in B. Um, and it's just whatever the intersection is inside of B. Okay, so that's the, the equation for conditional probability. Um, let's just use it now in a couple different types of examples to see some stuff we can do. Okay, so given that we rolled um, an even with a pair of dice, uh, let's just do one dice actually. Um, what's the probability that we roll a two? So let's think about it in terms of this equation here. So the probability, so what are my events? So A is the probability of rolling a two, or not the probability, it's just the event rolling a two. In other words, it's this subset of the sample space, um, because that's the thing that we're trying to find the probability of given something else, given what, given that we already rolled an even, meaning that the event is a two, four, or six. Um, so then what is this thing? Well, I also need to know the intersection. The intersection is just the two as well, because there's only a two in both of them. Um, so then if I wanna know the probability of rolling a two, given that I've already rolled an even, which is what we're looking for. Um, so let me just underline that. So this probability given we rolled an even is this thing. Um, so it's just gonna be the probability of A and B over the probability of B. So the probability of A and B, the probability of rolling just a two is one out of six. And the probability of B of rolling an even is three out of six. So this becomes one third. Um, but you can also think about it as how much of A is inside of B. And you can see that it's one out of the three. Um, and that's the other way to think about this one third, the proportion of A that lies inside of B. Okay, um, so let's do another one. So given um, that we drew already a club from a deck, uh, what's the probability that we draw a king? So here, what are my events? Well, I'm trying to figure out the probability that we draw a king given that we draw a club. So A is going to be that we drew a king. Um, and so what's the probability of A, just to practice here? Well, there's four kings in the deck out of 52 cards. Okay, so B is gonna be, drew a club. 
what's the probability of B? That's going to be, there's 13 clubs, 52. Um, and then I need the intersection. So I need to know how many kings are clubs. So this is really, I'm drawing a king club. Well, there's only one of those, which is the king of clubs. So there's one king of clubs out of the deck. So that's that. Um, so now I can find the probability of drawing a king given that I've drawn a club using this again. So it's going to be one out of 52. That's the probability of um, drawing the king of clubs over the probability of B, which is drawing a club, 13 out of 52. So this will be one out of 13. Let me simplify. Okay, and again, you can also think about it as the proportion of how many kings are clubs. There's one king out of the 13 clubs. So it's how many A's are inside of B, which is the intersection divided by how much stuff is in B, basically. Okay, um, so then let's think about some other stuff with, that we can do. So sometimes we can rearrange this formula and, and think about it in different ways. So sometimes, depending on what you're given, um, this is useful. So sometimes this guy is useful, but we can also do, so what about the probability of B given A, um, well, we can do that too. So then it's just switching the places of A and B. Um, and we get another formula. Um, so this time, sometimes depending on what you're given in the problem, this can be more useful. Um, but then notice we can also rearrange terms. So sometimes you're, 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 when are these useful? These are useful if, if this information is given to you. If you know these two things, then you can, then you can find these two things. Um, but you can rearrange so that the opposite type of thing happens. So if you multiply the denominators over, like on this first one, you multiply P of B, the probability of B over to the left, then you get a formula for the intersection. Um, so you get this. Or if you multiply probability of A over on the second one, then you get a different formula. You get this. Um, but in fact, these two things are the same Because um, don't forget, saying A intersect B is the same as saying B intersect A. It's just what's in common to both. It doesn't matter the order. Um, so these are actually equal. So then you get another interesting relationship, which is this. Probability of B times probability of A given B is the same as probability of A times probability of B given A. Um, that's because the intersection is the same either way. So you sort of extract a lot of information out of just this one formula. Um, so I guess there's like about five things here. One, two, three, four, five. Any of these five might be useful depending on what type of problem you're dealing with and what kind of information you're given. Okay, so let's uh, do an example. Okay, so just to simplify, we'll just be given some information, very specific. So probability of A is 0.2, probability of B is 0.3, probability of C is 0 0.06. Okay, um, let's find something that looks like it'll be very complicated. Probability of B given, um, 
I'll write this in a different color to make it more clear. Given all of this stuff at once, A, which is going to look complicated, A complement intersect B union, A intersect uh, B complement. Uh, sorry, I don't need that last parentheses. Okay, like that. Um, so, so it looks sort of intimidating at first, um, but let's just visualize what is what the heck is this thing first? So it's actually um, the stuff in A or in B, but not both. So if you want to draw this set visually, you have A, you have B. So it's the stuff in A or the stuff in B, but not the stuff in the intersection. Um, so how could that be? Well, well A complement intersect B, that's saying the stuff is in B because the intersection is in B, but not in A. So that's that stuff. Um, and then I guess I'll do this in blue. The other one is A intersect B complement. So that's the stuff in A. So it's gotta be in A here, but it's not in B. So it's not in that middle part. Um, so that's what that is. So we're finding the probability that B occurs in words, probability that B occurs given that a or B occurs, but not both. That's what this is really saying. Um, okay, so then we have all sorts of rules that we can try to use. Um, let's just use the, the first formula that we learned. So the probability of something given something is the one we're gonna use first just to get started. So what is this? It's the probability of the intersection of the two. So B intersect this big old second thing, which I guess need the second parentheses now. So it's the probability of that. Um, divided by the probability of the second thing, which is this big green thing here. Okay, so, so we've broken it down using the formula, uh, seemingly will help a little bit. Um, but a lot of times what happens is you get these big complicated unions and intersections and complements, and they just simplify very easily if you think about it. So, so this simplifies on the top very easily because of this intersection with B. So this is now, if you just think about it visually, if I intersect that with B, it's just gonna be the stuff in blue. It's just gonna be um, this blue stuff here, which was really just this. So. So when I intersect these two, the top just becomes B intersect, or sorry, it was A intersect B complement. Or sorry, uh, blue one, hold on. yeah, mixed up. Sorry, the red one was the, was the B, sorry, sorry, sorry. Different arrow. Okay, so this guy, Draw this, they intersect to be just the stuff in B. Um, and you could use like the distributive property to actually distribute this thing through and, and sort of work it out. Uh, but it's easier just to see the picture because when you intersect with B, you only want the stuff that's in B. And this stuff is not in B at all because it's in the complement of B. So then it becomes B together with this stuff. Um, but 
you're just intersecting with what you already have, which is B. So this just becomes B intersect A complement on the top there is a lot simpler. Um, and then on the bottom, these two pieces are disjoint, right? That's what's in the red and the blue here. So this is the, uh, the blue and this is the red. Those two pieces are disjoint and I'm uniting them, them together to get this whole thing, but they are disjoint. So when I union two disjoint things, I can just figure out their probabilities independently and add, that's the definition of having a probability function in the first place. And so we get that. Okay, um, so now we're gonna bring in sort of a new helpful trick Um, so this thing is actually something that you can do very quickly as like a little shortcut. So, so again, what is this visually? This is the stuff in B, but not in A. So it's basically, you could think of it as B, the stuff in B take away the stuff in the intersection. So that's the trick to this one. So, so if I do all of B, then it's this green stuff. And then I just take away the intersection. Then I get the stuff that's in B, but not in A, which is what this is describing. Okay, um, so that's gonna come in handy on the top there. So there's lots of tricks like these. Um, and then similarly, you could do the opposite type of thing for A. So you could say, if I look at the stuff that's in A, but not in B, so A intersect B complement, so A, in A, but not B, in words, I could just take the stuff in A, and then I could subtract the stuff in the intersection as well. And of course, for intersections, you, you could write A intersect B or B intersects A, those are the same. Okay. Um, so we did the top, the bottom, this guy, that's actually the same thing as the top, except in reverse order, but remember you can reverse the order of intersections or unions. So that's the same as B intersect A complement. So this is really the same as the top. Plus, and then this second guy here, that became that, this is gonna become this. That second guy here is what I just did. So it's the probability of A take away the probability in the intersection. And now we have enough to do the calculation because these things are all given to us at the beginning. All right, so we have 0.3 minus, um, sorry, I wrote, oh my God, a long time ago I wrote probability of C. What the heck is C? C was not a thing, ah, stupid. C was supposed to be A intersect B. <laughs> all right, so now you see the point of why I was trying to, Oh man, I hope that wasn't confusing the whole time. You're wondering what the heck was C. Um, so the whole time I was trying to get intersections involved because this is what is supposed to be given to you. And I just rewrote, I wrote it wrong. So that's what's given to you, 0 0.06. Okay, so now we could do it, 0 0.06. Um, and then this would be 0.3 minus 0 0.06 plus probability of A was 0 0.2 minus another 0 0.06. Okay, you work this out on your calculator, you end up with 0.63. All right, so that's the end of that example. Um, okay, so now let's do another one. So you can, you can have three events. Um, so the last one I accidentally wrote A, B, and C, but there's only supposed to be two events, A and B. Um, and this one I'll actually have three events. And then you have to sort of like chain things together as we'll see. Okay, so let's have 
probability, I'll call these E1, E2, and E3. So E1 will be two fifths. E2 will be three fourths. And E3 will be two thirds. I think we end up not even needing one of these actually. Um, what we need is some of these other things, which is the probability of E3 given E2 will be told to us ahead of time, four fifths, and the probability of E1 given um, E2 and E3, the intersection is one half. All right, so we're just given a whole bunch of information. And with that information, we wanna find probability of E1 union E2 and E3. Okay, so um, these givens here tell us that we're gonna need to use the uh, conditional probability formula to, to relate intersections and um, givens together, conditionals and intersections together, or else it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay. Um, so what's the first thing we can do? Well, there's a lot of paths you can try. Um, what I'm gonna do is just use the union formula. So I don't know that these are disjoint or anything like that. So I have to use the one where I add the two together. So I add the probability of the individual pieces of the union together, giving me that. But then I have to subtract the probability of the intersection of the two pieces, the two pieces being E1 and E2 intersect E3. Okay, so that gets me up to a good start because I do already know this one that's given to us up there. Um, this one, I don't know, but I do know this and they are related somehow. So I'm going to use that. How are they related? Um, the probability of E1 given E2 intersect E3 is, so this is a conditional. So the conditional is um, the probability of, of the first one intersected with the second one. divided by the probability of the second one. So that relates them. It's sort of um, not actually gonna be helpful here because I, I don't know this. Um, but actually now that, now I see that this will be helpful for this. That's actually this one. So maybe I'll use that later. So what else can I do to try to get this middle thing? Um, well, what about this one? I haven't used this one at all. So what is probability of E3 given E2 as a formula? It's given to us that it's four fifths, but let's actually write out the equation. So it's gonna be the probability of E3 and E2 divided by the probability of E2. So now I think we can um, we can use this because we know this, right? E2 probability, that's 3 fourths. Um, and we know E3 given E2, we do, we know this one too, it's uh, 4 fifths. So that means we can figure out the other one that we're missing. Um, okay, so I think we have everything we need. We just gotta put it all together. Okay, probability of E1, is two fifths. So let's just make some progress and put that in. Give ourselves a little confidence boost. Um, the second one, I'm gonna multiply this guy over because now I've solved for that middle one and, and replaced it with this. And I do know both of these numbers. So on the next step, I'll just 
start writing it out. Um, so this is three fourths times four fifths. Okay, and then over here, minus, I think I accidentally already figured that one out by doing this. So if you notice this thing that we're trying to figure out what it was is exactly this thing. So if I just multiply the denominator up again, like I did on the previous step, then I'll have everything that I need to figure this out. So that times this, Um, and I think I have these two. So E1, oh, sorry, that should be an E2 and E3, not E2 and E2. So that one is given to us, is it? Um, it's not, but it's actually the same as what we just did. It's this. E3 and E2 is the same as E2 and E3. Um, hold on, sorry. I think I mixed up something somewhere. and e3 oh wait yeah, yeah that's fine okay so then this should be so that is that yeah I think I made any typos there's so many indices i hope i didn't make any typos okay so that's that in that um so that's again just another three fourths times four fifths because this guy is the same thing as this guy, um, which is what we just said was this thing. Okay, a lot of arrows. Okay, so then all that's left is this guy, which is given to us as one half. Okay, so then this is the final ability that we're looking for. Okay, so there's a million different ways. Um, oh, I guess this will turn out to be 0.7. There's a million different ways to, to use this conditional formula. Um, so you just got to sort of try stuff. And it's OK. You, when you watch me, even though I did sort of mess up, um, what you're watching is somebody who already worked out the details. But it's perfectly reasonable to like try some stuff and it doesn't work. You just try again. Um, and you just use these formulas and, and try to simplify things until you get stuff that relates to what types of things you're given. OK. Um, so that's it for this lecture. See you next time.